Until now, we only knew that nothing could travel faster than light and that space curves in the presence of mass and energy. But a completely new effect has been discovered, representing one of the greatest advances in Einstein's theory of relativity. This discovery is so significant that it has been peer-reviewed and published, representing a major improvement to the theory of relativity. The author is a physicist and chemist globally recognized as being among the 37 most influential researchers in the world. This new relativistic effect has been theoretically developed over decades and is called relativistic viscosity at near-light speeds. This effect changes certain states of matter in space at the subatomic level, and most incredibly, it affects practically all stars, galaxies, and even any spacecraft attempting to travel at the speed of light. How did we not realize what we were missing before? If I told you this is so revolutionary that it will bring new advances and technologies for building relativistic engines and spacecraft, it would sound crazy. Stay tuned, and I'll tell you about it, and this time your brain will explode like never before at the speed of light. Relativity is a scientifically proven theory through numerous experiments, and there's no debate about its validity. But we all know it's not complete, and although it's over 100 years old, there's still much to discover. To understand the new relativistic effect, you need to know some basic concepts. Relativity tells us that the space inhabited by all living beings, planets, and everything that exists is immersed in a mathematical entity called space-time. You can think of it as similar to a moldable fabric, but it's really the area of our universe where all physical laws develop. Einstein demonstrated that this fabric can be molded in the presence of gravity and velocity, just like a mattress on a bed. Molding that fabric affects not only space, but also time. Space and time curve due to gravity or velocity, and this means time passes more slowly since, in a way, the temporal dimension takes longer to traverse the same space. This has implications when a spacecraft approaches the speed of light. Einstein said that the speed of light must be constant for all observers, regardless of how fast they're moving. Now, how would this be explained with a flashlight traveling at 50% of light speed? If the light beam cannot exceed 300,000 kilometers per second, it means that what changes is time, which passes more slowly for the moving observer. This is the most famous time dilation effect known, and the one that could theoretically allow us to travel throughout the universe in an instant although we would see that time passes much faster in the rest of the universe. But it's not just time that compresses. An object also experiences a change in its length at relativistic speeds. This effect is called contraction. An object moving at a speed close to the speed of light relative to a stationary observer will experience a reduction in its length in the direction of motion. For these effects to be notable, you must travel at least at 10% of the speed of light. There are many effects at the microscopic level as well. One of them involves gold. The properties of gold, including its color, are related to relativity. In the outer layer of the gold atom, electrons move at 60% of the speed of light. The contraction of several of its electrons in their orbitals causes more blue light to be absorbed instead of the ultraviolet light that would be absorbed if it weren't for relativity. This way, gold appears golden in color. Without relativity, it would be white. As you can see, there are a series of effects at these enormous speeds, but we hadn't realized something very important. Like in the example of gold and other elements, we only knew about the effects of relativity on individual atoms, but not about their interaction with other atoms and particles, until now. Alexios Sacone discovered a new relativistic effect related to the viscosity of fluids at speeds approaching light speed, thanks to sophisticated mathematics with relativity principles and based on the relativistic Langen equation that describes particle motion and their interactions. This new approach to relativity has been evaluated and validated by the scientific community and represents a giant leap in understanding how particles behave in a vacuum at near-light speeds. And this is tremendous because this effect affects fluids and plasmas that change under extreme conditions. Plasma is the most abundant form of matter in the universe, representing at least 99%. Plasma is an ionized gas where electrons have separated from atomic nuclei, creating a soup of charged particles that interact through electromagnetic forces. Stars are plasma, and the space between stars and galaxies is also filled with plasma in the form of highly dispersed ionized gases. The new effect occurs when a fluid moves at speeds approaching the speed of light. To understand it simply, let's think about a fluid like air or water. Normally, when a fluid flows, the particles within it move and collide with each other. 
We call viscosity that resistance that particles experience when moving. The more viscous a fluid is, the harder it is to flow at normal speeds. A fluid's viscosity depends on things like its temperature and the size of the particles that compose it. But at near light speeds, things change. In this case, the particles that make up the fluid no longer behave the same way due to the effects of special relativity. Relativity says that as objects move faster, their behavior changes. In particular, the momentum of particles, which is basically the amount of movement they have, adjusts when they travel at speeds approaching light speed. This correction is due to a factor called the Lorentz factor. When a flow moves quickly, particles no longer follow the flow as easily. They begin to deviate from the flow due to the interactions this deviation has with itself. Known as movement, it doesn't increase resistance to fluid movement, which increases viscosity. That's the key that we hadn't considered until now. Fluids become viscous at near light speeds because their particles deviate from their trajectory and their interaction is more complex. Actually, this is quite intuitive. From the fluid's perspective, it would flow with classical viscosity. But from the perspective of an external observer who saw the fluid closer to light speed, it would flow more slowly. Imagine what this means. The sun is the best example. It's a hot sphere of plasma with particles at relativistic speeds. This means that now, thanks to this new relativistic effect, we'll be able to much better predict solar storms, their eruptions and energy transport, even solar wind. But that's not all. We're talking about better understanding accretion disks in black holes or supernovas, as it's telling us how plasma flows and distributes through space. The plasmas around Earth would also be involved, such as the famous Van Allen belts, neutron stars, galaxies, and much more. And something very important is that we can know precisely what happens to a spacecraft at near-light speeds and how it interacts with plasma particles. This would unexpectedly influence how energy and momentum transfer between the spacecraft and the environment, which will help us create new resistant materials that better withstand the interstellar medium. Some surely thought, what about the warp drive and this new relativistic effect? For those who don't know, the Alcubierre warp principle is a theoretical engine that curves space-time and allows space to be warped to reach the destination before light in normal space. The new relativistic viscosity effect will also be relevant in designing technologies like the warp drive, since the fluid or plasma used to generate energy would be subject to these effects. The best example would be when a warp bubble forms. Now we would know how plasma behaves in the interstellar medium. The applications of this great discovery are immense. Fusion reactors, and theoretically, an engine could be designed with fluid or plasma at near light speeds, and its efficiency would involve the relativistic viscosity effect. The Large Hadron Collider would also benefit. Now we'll be able to much better interpret experiments with quark-gluon plasmas. And here's something surprising. If a spacecraft moves at near light speeds from the perspective of the ship with a plasma engine, the liquid would flow with classical viscosity. But from the perspective of an external observer who sees that liquid, it would flow more slowly, meaning more viscously. In summary, the relativistic viscosity effect has a more relevant impact for an external observer who isn't in relativistic motion. In a spacecraft, it wouldn't affect the plasma engines inside, but it would affect the fluid surrounding it. It's the same thing that happens with time when traveling at a speed close to light. Passengers will never notice that their time is slower inside the ship, but for the rest of the universe, everything happens in fast motion. And this is a fundamental principle of physics. The laws of physics are the same for all observers regardless of their velocity or direction. And now I'm going to give you bad news. If the interstellar medium becomes more viscous at high speeds, the spacecraft would experience a kind of relativistic resistance similar to how an object experiences resistance in a viscous fluid, but on a much larger scale. Because relativistic effects mean that not only does the ship's mass increase as you approach light speed, but the medium also becomes more viscous. What consequences does this have? It generates excessive heat and additional stress on the spacecraft. So traveling at high speeds through space is even more difficult with this new effect. However, it helps us understand it better and thus design ships to adapt to the environment. But on the other hand, if we want to go faster than 10% of light speed one day, it forces us to consider still theoretical shortcuts like the warp drive or wormholes. Relativistic viscosity is an amazing concept and highlights our current ignorance of the cosmos. It's really just a whisper in the very fabric of space-time that reveals something so incredible 
that not even Albert Einstein could imagine. The laws of physics are immutable, but their manifestation can vary depending on the observer. In fact, the universe seems to mold itself in such a way that any observer from any corner of the cosmos perceives the same coherent and constant set of rules regardless of their velocity or mass. It's as if space-time itself were an intelligence that ceaselessly adjusts and adapts to observational conditions. It's surprising that a century later, we continue to discover new effects of relativity and expanding its scope where Albert Einstein couldn't continue. The brilliant physicist opened a door to the unknown with new ways of understanding the universe. I wonder what other relativistic effects might exist that we don't yet know about and that perhaps could reveal a unified theory. Here lies the key to completing relativity and finishing what Einstein started. If you found this information about new advances in relativity theory useful, I invite you to share it with other physics and astronomy enthusiasts. Science advances better when knowledge is shared. Until next time, seekers of knowledge.